The Apple TV 4K with the new Siri remote is Apple's latest top-of-the-line TV streaming device that I've been using for the past six months. And I'm gonna take you through what it's been like to use, the top features, any downsides, and who I recommend this device for and why it's become my personal favorite streaming device. So why would you go with an Apple TV 4K? Well, the first reason I think you would go for this device is you want to be confident with whatever you're streaming that it's going to be in the highest quality possible. The Apple TV 4K supports HDR, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, and high frame rate HDR, which is 60 FPS HDR content. And over the past six months of using this device, I've had zero problems with the Apple TV 4K being able to pass over Dolby Vision, 4K HDR, and Dolby Atmos content through to my Onkyo receiver and Sony OLED television. And Apple's own shows from their Apple TV Plus service like Ted Lasso and Foundation look especially good since Apple tends to release their shows in Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. And if your TV doesn't support 4K Dolby Vision, Apple added a color calibration feature you can use to make sure you're still getting the best picture quality possible from the content you stream on your Apple TV. Lastly, unlike cheaper streaming sticks from competitors, the Apple TV includes an internet port for faster and a more stable internet connection which means the content you're watching is less likely to buffer or downgrade in quality compared to streaming over Wi-Fi. The next thing I like about the Apple TV 4K is tvOS, which is the operating system that runs on it. With tvOS on the Apple TV 4K, everything runs extremely smooth and I've never run into any lag or hangups thanks to the A12 Bionic chip that's included in the device. The UI is very simple. It's a grid of app icons like any iOS or iPad OS device. One of my favorite parts of tvOS is a very handy control center, which you get to by holding down the TV button, and from there you can switch users, connect to AirPods or HomePod minis, or even connect to a SharePlay session with a friend. Another thing I like is the default playback menu. It's very well designed and is simple to use. Tap the touchpad on the remote once to bring it up while watching something. If you tap it again, it'll give you an estimated time for whatever you're watching will finish, and you can swipe up to the quick control icons for captions, audio settings, or to enable picture-in-picture. -picture. tvOS also makes it easy to see all of the apps I have open. You just double-click the TV button and swipe through them just like you would on any iOS device. There is also support for multiple user profiles, which is handy if you want to keep your recommendations and watch list history separate from others in your home. Though Apple did add a feature where you can have a row in the Apple TV app that'll show content suggestions for everyone in your family as well, which I think is a great idea for families. When not in use, you can set the Apple TV to turn on these beautiful screen savers that update every month and really show off the 4K HDR capabilities of your TV if it supports that format. Now the main way you watch something on the Apple TV is through an app. tvOS gives you the ability to download major apps from streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, HBO Max, Disney Plus, etc. through Apple's App Store on the Apple TV. There are also a lot of other types of apps that you can find on there as well, such as music apps like Spotify, Apple Music, or Amazon Music, sports apps like ESPN, meditation and fitness apps like Calm and Apple Fitness Plus, games, social media apps, and more. The main app you'll interact with on the Apple TV is the Apple TV app, which tries to act as a one-stop shop for all of your TV shows and movies on the device with a universal watch list called Up Next. Though, like with the Chromecast with Google TV and other streaming devices, Netflix shows and movies will not appear in this aggregated view. Still, I found Up Next on the Apple TV to be very useful. You can easily mark something as watched or remove it from your Up Next queue when you press and hold the center button on the remote. And content is automatically added to your Up Next queue when you start watching something, so if you pause or stop watching it for some reason, it's easy to get back to. Now, once you finish a season of a show, and let's say a year goes by and then the second season of that show comes out, that second season will actually pop back up into your Up Next queue, which I really dig. You can also use Up Next for sports as well. So you can add your team to Up Next, and anytime your team is playing a game, the game will appear in your Up Next queue. The Apple TV app is also the place to go to discover shows, movies, and sports to watch. It'll take into account your viewing history for recommendations, and if you see a movie you've already watched, you can manually mark it as watched, which should help improve your recommendations, though I do wish there was a thumbs up or down rating system like you get with the Google TV. 
Lastly, the Apple TV app is also where you'll find all the movies or TV show episodes you purchased through iTunes or connected to your iTunes account from a service like Movies Anywhere. Now, one cool thing that Apple does here is anytime you've purchased anything through iTunes, like a movie or a TV show episode, and there's a version of that episode or movie available in a 4K HDR format, Apple will actually upgrade your purchase to that format free of charge. And they even have a tab in the library so you can see all of the movies you own that are available in 4K HDR. Though weirdly, some of my movies that are in 4K HDR didn't show up here like Home Alone. Also, in the library view, there's no actual way to know what quality is available for your movies because when you click the movie thumbnail card, it takes you into this DVD-like screen to access the movie and play extras. The only way I've found to actually see the quality available is to back out to the main Apple TV interface and use Siri to find that movie, and then it'll show you what quality it's available in. Apple could definitely clean this part of the user experience up a lot. Now, when you download a bunch of apps to your Apple TV, often to make the apps actually work, you're either going to need to use a cable provider login or some username and password that you created. Apple has a feature that helps solve some of this frustration by allowing you to store your TV provider information and share that information with specific apps, which hopefully will save you some time logging into multiple apps that still require a TV cable subscription. For apps that require an email address and password, you can choose to store email addresses you frequently use. Another thing that can help with text input on the Apple TV is if you have an iPhone nearby, anytime you need to input text like passwords for services, your iPhone will automatically buzz with a notification to open up the Apple TV remote app, allowing you to type in passwords passwords from your phone versus with the Apple TV remote, and overall for me using the phone has been a much better experience. Now another feature that's very useful on the Apple TV is Siri. You'll use it a lot when you want to search for content and you can use it to narrow down your searches as well. So if you ask Siri to show holiday movies but you only want to watch critically acclaimed holiday movies, you can just follow up by saying only the good ones and it'll filter out the current suggestions to only show you critically acclaimed holiday movies. While watching content, you can also ask Siri who's in this to bring up the cast information for whatever you're watching with the apps that support this feature. And you know those situations where you're watching something but you miss a piece of dialogue and you want to go back to see what someone said? Well, you can just ask Siri, what did they say? And it'll automatically rewind about 15 seconds and temporarily turn on closed captions so you can hear as well as read the dialogue that you missed. Siri can help you turn off your TV as well from devices like an iPhone or a HomePod mini. Just ask Siri to turn off the TV and as long as all of your devices support HDMI CEC in your TV setup, which most recent devices should, Siri will turn off the entire system through the Apple TV. Now the next major benefit I found with using an Apple TV is when you combine it with another Apple device in the Apple ecosystem. The more Apple devices you typically have, the greater benefit you get and the more features you have access to. And the first one of those features with the Apple TV for me has been AirPlay. AirPlay allows you to stream anything you're currently viewing on another Apple device like your iPhone, Mac, or iPad on the Apple TV wirelessly with the tap of a button. Now you can also use AirPlay to expand where the sound is playing from your Apple TV to multiple AirPlay enabled speakers. And this feature, this feature is really cool. It's great for scenarios like, let's say there's a sports game on, you got a bunch of people over and someone needs to walk from where the TV is to a, a different room or you need to go to the kitchen, but you still wanna hear what's going on in the game. Well, with this feature, you can do that. You simply go to control center on the Apple TV, select AirPlay, and then select all of the speakers you want to AirPlay the Apple TV's audio to. And Apple also has a wireless sync feature in settings you'll want to go through and make sure your AirPlay speakers will stay in sync with the sound coming out of your TV or sound system. SharePlay is the next Apple ecosystem feature that I think really helps differentiate the Apple TV from its competition. It allows you to watch certain content from supported services at the same exact time with friends and family virtually. All you have to do is start a FaceTime call with who you want to watch with and then bring up Control Center to start the SharePlay. And then start playing something on your TV from an app you both have access to. Or if you've already started watching content on your iPhone or iPad, you can send it to the Apple TV as well. Next up, let's talk about spatial audio and AirPods with the Apple TV. 
Spatial audio is a proprietary feature for Apple devices that decodes Dolby Atmos and other surround sound signals and combines it with head tracking to emulate the effect of surround sound when wearing a pair of compatible AirPods or Beats earbuds. You can easily switch audio from your TV to your AirPods from Control Center in tvOS, and this has been perfect for watching a blockbuster movie without wanting to wake up your neighbors or family, and this works with a variety of apps and content services like HBO Max, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, and of course, Apple TV+, Plus, Apple's in-house subscription service. I recently rewatched Dune through the Apple TV with my AirPods Max on and spatial audio enabled, and this setup is going to sound better than the majority of sound setups people have with their televisions because frankly, most people do not invest enough in audio equipment for their televisions. And this is especially going to sound way better if all you do is rely on your television for sound output. Now you can also pair third-party Bluetooth headphones and earbuds with the Apple TV as well, but in my experience, they don't sound nearly as good as the ones that support spatial audio. The next Apple ecosystem benefit with the Apple TV 4K is actually the setup process. The setup process with this device is much easier if you already have an iPhone. All you have to do is bring your iPhone close to the Apple TV and import settings like Wi-Fi, your Apple ID, and if you had a previous Apple TV, it'll automatically import your home screen from your previous one, which saves a lot of time setting this device up. Now, the last two Apple ecosystem features I want to call out with the Apple TV 4K are HomeKit and Apple Fitness. HomeKit is Apple's smart home platform, and by having a dedicated device as a HomeKit hub like the Apple TV, other devices like my August Smart Lock can directly connect to my Apple TV to be controlled. Apple Fitness Plus is also integrated with the Apple TV and works with your Apple Watch to easily track your movement and heart rate as you work out. Next up, another recent addition to the Apple TV's experience is the ability to use two stereo paired HomePod minis as your Apple TV speakers. Now, after trying this out for a bit, to me, it just doesn't give you enough bass. And honestly, for $200, I'm not sure if you're better off going with two HomePod minis versus spending just a tiny bit more for a sound bar and subwoofer setup. But if you're really serious about your television experience, it's still worth it in my book to get an Atmos capable receiver and speaker system or sound bar like the one from Sonos to take full advantage of what your Apple TV 4K has to offer. Another improvement Apple made to the Apple TV experience this year is the new Siri remote. First, they made it thicker, so it's less likely to easily slip in between your couch cushions, which I can confirm has not happened to me as much with this remote compared to the previous version. There's now a dedicated back button, mute button, and an off button for your TV on this remote as well. The power button allows you to turn on and off your entire system, not just the Apple TV itself. The mic button is now on the side of the remote for using Siri and speech dictation on the TV, and Apple removed the touchpad and replaced it with a circle at the top with four clickable buttons on the outside ring for navigation, and also a center button that is clickable as well. However, they also cleverly made this circle touch responsive too. You can still use all of the button shortcuts and controls and swipe gestures on the new Siri remote as you did on the old one. And if you want to disable the touch functionality of the remote and just use the clicks, you can do that in remote settings. Like the previous generation, this remote is rechargeable through its lightning port on the bottom and you can see its battery level and settings. For me, it's lasted me about six months on a full charge. And the Apple TV will remind you to charge it when the battery starts to get low. You also have the ability to control the Apple TV through the Apple TV remote app on the iPhone as well. And if you're really in a jam and need to pause the TV, you can now just use Siri on a HomePod mini to play or pause media on your Apple TV, or even play a specific show from a supported app on the TV. All right, so that's everything I like about using the Apple TV. Now let's talk downsides. The first downside I've encountered while using the Apple TV 4K is with speech dictation in certain apps. For me, I found it to be a bit too slow to trigger Siri from when you press the mic button or especially in YouTube Zap, speech dictation will take what you said and blank out the text input, almost like it just lost the text that you just said. I'm not sure how widespread this is, but regardless, if it happens, it, it's not a great experience. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before my recommendation is price. 
Originally, I was going to say that the price of the Apple TV 4K at 179 US dollars for the 32 gig model, which is priced much higher than its competition, was a downside. But after thinking about this a lot, I'm finding a hard time saying the price of this device is a huge downside because when you consider all of the things it can do, I actually think the experience is worth a bit of a premium and I'm happy to pay it to get a solid performing TV streaming device and one that comes with Apple ecosystem benefits like spatial audio with my AirPods Max. So yes, I do recommend the Apple TV 4K. I'd recommend it to anyone who wants a TV streaming device that just works. It has all of the apps you'd want to stream from. It has excellent performance with both its user interface and its streaming performance, is perfect for if you have other Apple devices or services, and it's the device I grab the remote for over my other streaming devices time and time again. Now, if you don't care about having a fast and smooth experience with a TV streaming device that supports 4K HDR content, or you just have an HD television, in that case, this device might not be for you and you might want to look at some of the other competing devices. However, I'd still recommend getting an Apple TV, either the HD version or the previous 4K version if you can find one, if you have an iPhone or other Apple devices, because when you pair an Apple TV with other Apple devices, the benefits you get to me still outweigh the additional cost. Lastly, if you have the previous generation Apple TV 4K and are already wondering if you should upgrade, I don't think you should. But you might want to consider getting the new Siri remote that Apple sells separately. It's $60, but less likely to get caught in my couch cushions and easier to use, so it might be worth it to you. If you have any further questions about the Apple TV 4K or you want to share your experience with this device or a previous Apple TV, leave a comment below, hit that thumbs up button if you liked this video and found it helpful, and subscribe to the channel to see more Six Months Later review videos on Apple and other tech products. For Six Months Later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.